Yes, sir. We back. Get the merch. Don't forget the merch, man. We come with all different cup of colors. Everything, man. Hip hop hoops, man. You know, if you want shirts, you just DM us and we'll get you all the information you need so you can get your shirt, man. But we got a special guest today, you know, Mr. Bobby Allen. Um, Malton's one of Malton, Malton's finest, but not only Malton's finest, Toronto, Canada, period, finest. One of the best to do it, man. So, you know, we just definitely, um, we're definitely gonna, um, I seen him, he was live, he was, he was, he, he was live, I'm not sure, I, I just seen him when I logged back out that he was live, um, but yeah, man, we're gonna sit down and chop it up, yeah, I don't know, I see him on live too, hmm, let me see if I send him a request, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, no, he needs to jump in mine. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yes, sir. Yo. Hey, brother. <laughs> I did it. Yes, I did sir. it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Holy smokes, man. Yeah. I told you I'm not good with technology, man. <laughs> That's all good, It's man. crazy. <laughs> okay, Yo, what up? Listen, man, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. You know, this means no, a lot. No, thanks for having me. No, this means a lot to me. me. It means a lot to hip-hop hoops, man. Especially being a Malton guy, this is like, this is legendary for me. Cause I, I heard all the yeah. stories, I heard all the stories, but I actually never ever met you. So this is great. There man. you go. Yeah, man. You know. There you go. There you go. So how how you been staying safe, man? With, with the whole COVID stuff going on, man. Um, I get up in the morning. I might go for a jog, bring my son with me. Then we start. He does his homeschool. I'm basically his teacher. I might cut the grass, do whatever, you know. Yeah. With my wife, we go get groceries. We just try to, you know, keep mentally, you know, I have a whole bunch of things I'm working on. So I talk to agents. I do a whole bunch of different things. So hmm. I try to keep mental because it's a mental thing, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a mental thing because you're in your house. But I love being in my house too. So yeah. it's, not, it's not that serious to me. But yeah, I try to keep busy. I try to keep fit because whenever I get back in the gym, I don't want to, I put on probably 15 pounds though, <laughs> even though <laughs> me I'm, too. yeah. Me too. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, you know, even though you're – because I used to do the workout with the kids, but I also used to go to the Y and then do other stuff too. Mm. But now you can't really do much. So, but you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Facts, facts. Well, we're we're, we're going to start it off, man. I wanna, I'm going to ask you some questions, man. I got a, I got a whole bunch of questions, stuff that I oh, want – stuff that I want to know, you know. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> that I'm, that I'm no interested problem. in. So, um, I just want to know, you know, the start of your basketball journey and, like, where – did the name Bobby Allen first become big, man? How long you got? <laughs> man, listen, we got we got all day, man. I'm I'm with you. Okay, man. so so um, this is a funny story, and so I lived right behind Westwood High School, mm. right? So yeah. I, in Malton, I lived right behind Westwood High School, and uh, the teams were good, the players were good. And we're going into grade 10, and everybody transferred. So you got the two better players transferred. You got a 6'5 dude transferred. My best friend moved to to Brampton. Another dude moved to Brampton. So I'm stuck at Westwood, and all my friends are gone, and the better ball players transferred to, I think, Weston, and one went to West Humber. Mm. So I'm sitting there, but I was a point guard, so I'm like, I don't know. I was no superstar. I was good. And I'm like, I can't stay here because I'm the only one here. Right. So everybody left. Like, I lived right behind Westwood. It's now Lincoln Alexander. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. you know what, man? So I transferred to Morningstar. I started playing at Morningstar. 
And same thing. Um, they said the point guard already was taken, so they put me to three, three man. And I'm like, okay, as long as I get to play, I don't care. Mm -hmm. So we started playing, we started playing, we started playing. And one of my best friends, Dwayne, says, hey, man, stop passing the ball so much. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what I mean? He goes, you're passing it to us, and we're not doing anything with this, and we're losing. And I'm like, well, you know, when you get on that yellow bus to get back to your school after your game and stuff, everyone's complaining they don't touch the ball. Right. So, so I'm like, okay, I want to pass to everybody. He goes, no, stop. <laughs> so maybe two, three games later, a whole bunch of American schools start calling. Because mm. I got, went to 25, to 35, to 40. We got a good score. I just look at my teammates, and they're, you know, they're open. I'm like, yo, but my boy's like, no, they're open for a reason. <laughs> And then next thing you know, I go into Toronto Star and then Miss Saga News, Brampton Guardian, and that's how everything started. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so, so let me ask you a question. In high school, who, who was your competition? Like, who was the guy that, you know, was like, okay, it's him and, it's him and this guy? No, like, this, that, that, that question is a super question because when I was in grade nine, mm -hmm. me and my boys went down to watch Bathurst Heights, and there was this guy named Phil Dixon. Right. No, so grade nine, I was probably five two, five three. Phil was already six five. Same age as me, could do everything. Dunking, reverse, everything. I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> you understand? Same age, but yeah. six five, six four, whatever. And I chased after that dude. And you know, every time I was in Malton and Brampton or any gym, I was like, there's a guy bigger and better than me. Mm -hmm. And then around grade end of grade eleven, I think. Great end of grade ten. I grew to six three. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then by grade 12-ish, people start saying, yo, you're better than Phil Dixon. You're as good as Phil And then that's when all that stuff started. Okay. But I chased after him. So that, so that was my guy. Okay. That was well, my guy. Well, well, you know, moving to this, like, there's always been um, talk. And I know people hate lists and all that other stuff. And, you know, it's good, it's good barbershop talk, right? Yes. But they always yes. want to know – the conversation has started about who is the best player to come out of Canada. And yeah. Phil Dixon's name has, has, been, has been at the top on a lot of guys' list, like number one. Yeah. But, yeah. Your, but, your, but your name has been in there as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, well, we, to me, I think uh, Phil deserves it uh, in high school, mm -hmm. right? But then after, you know, he got injured and – all them different things, you know. And just remember, in high school, a lot of the kids are not developed yet. So when I went to 6'3", I was 178. But my prime weight is 6'3", 215, 210. Mm. You know, you can't do anything with me at that time. You know what I mean? So high school, I'll give him that. But, I mean, I, lo I love – he's the one that pushed me. Right. But I would have loved to see us if he didn't get hurt because I got lazy when he got hurt. Mm. When he got hurt, I stopped pushing. I believe if he didn't get hurt, we both would be chilling in the NBA. Easy. Because he was pushing me and I went after him. Right. You know what I mean? Great player. Great player. Great player. With high school. But when after that, then he got hurt. I, I can go to any gym in Canada after he got hurt and I never had to worry about anybody. Mm. Period. Facts. Those, are, those so, are the things I heard, man. I actually seen you when I was about, probably I was about 13. My sister took yeah. me to a tournament. Um, to watch you. You were at Naki. You were playing at Naki. I'm not sure the team that you were playing for. I was still young. Yeah, back of yard. Back of yard. Back of yard. <laughs> yeah, but I seen, I just seen a guy who was like over 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, you know, I don't know the exact height you were at that time, but you were just bigger yeah. than average and um, you were just shooting threes and you were dunking. You were a guard. And yeah, that's, that's when I, copy. yeah, that's when I knew, I was like, you know what? I can't be a 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big man. That's not going to work for where yeah, I want to go. that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not realistic. It's yeah, not realistic. Yeah, 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 that's not realistic. But you know, it's good for all of us because you know I saw a whole bunch of guys before me, mm -hmm. and they showed me. Like I had a guy at um, Morningstar, Wayne Perbu. He's six three point guard, and this is like eighty seven, eighty six. Wow. Yeah, you know, mm. and uh, but he just he came down and passed it around though. Yeah. He didn't really try to score. Mm -hmm. But he could score, and he didn't really try to shoot. But you saw a guy with six three bringing the ball up. That's crazy, and that was different. So we, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was good. You know, so it was good for me. And then I had a friend 
who was tall, but he he wanted to play a power forward, and he ended up six five, and he ended up going to Humber College. Mm. Because it's not realistic. Like you know what I mean, you gotta, yeah, no, you gotta, not. you're playing guys seven foot one, six ten. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what are you gonna do with that? Exactly. So that's yeah, yeah. Mean. So that's what it is. That's what it is. So so who who is like one of the players? Like you know, for me, obviously it was T Mac and Jordan. Those are those are my guys. Um, of course, some some Carmelo Anthony. Like who was who was a player that you like patterned your game after, growing up? I mean, uh, Errol, well, first of all. Before every scrimmage, every game, every practice, I watched Come Fly With Me. <laughs> every scrimmage, every I Come Fly With Me. You got guys that uh, I liked, Mitch Richmond. Nice. G.I. Ryder. Nice. You know, they're, everybody's strong. You're strong. You can take the hit. You can yeah. score on people. You can dunk on people. You can shoot the three. Mm-hmm. You can handle the ball. So I say those three guys, Jordan, uh, Mitch Richmond, G.I. Ryder. Yeah, right. It was not. He was strong. He was very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people forget about J.R. Ryder. They only remember from the dunk cup, uh, con, uh, competition when he put it between the exactly. legs. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He was nice though. So, so yeah. after, so after, so after, after Morningstar, what, what was it for you? Like, what'd you do after, after Morningstar? Okay, so after Morningstar it was tough because, uh, you know, I partied a lot. You know, did a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I had major universities looking at me, mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to class after grade 12, you know. And that's why I like working with the kids because, you know, I'm telling them, you can't just play ball, you know. So I had to go to junior college. Right. So I went down to junior college in Canton, Illinois, Spoon River Junior College. And uh, I was a two-time All-American there. I was junior college player of the year in America. That's tough. And then I moved on. Uh, then, I, then I moved on to – during my – Second year in junior college, my knee started bothering me. Mm-hmm. So I had Kansas State, Nebraska, Boston College, all these schools, NC State. Mm-hmm. And then my knee started bothering me. And they're coming to the game. They're seeing something's wrong. NC State stayed around. Kansas State stayed around. Boston College stayed around. But I chose Evansville because they said they were going to redshirt me mm-hmm. and then rehab my knee. They didn't rehab my knee. They didn't redshirt me. And I wasted a year because it was up and down because when you have tendonitis, Oh, yeah. You know, your body doesn't react the same. So mm-hmm. I came back home. I was frustrated. I was thinking about quitting ball. And then I started, my knee got better. My knee got better. And then I went back to Texas. And I went to Texas Pan American. Mm-hmm. And that's how I ended up there. And I did my last year there. I think we had a really good record there. I averaged like 16, 17, and whatever. I led the conference in field goal percentage as a guard. You know what I mean? And then I finished there. So that's that was my college. And this is and this is like in, in what what year? Like what year would you say? 94, 94, and, 93, and that, 94. And that's tough, man, because like in the in the in the early nineties, division one schools weren't like really coming out here to Canada. I had I had in my yeah. conference there when I finished up, I had Arkansas Little Rock, Derek Fish was there. Mm-hmm. I had Irvin Johnson who was at University of New Orleans. Yep. I, I had some different NBA guys that yeah. played at New Orleans. And I – Western Kentucky, my year, beat uh, Michigan with a 5-5. Five five. Mm-hmm. I gave them 30 and 10. That's crazy. And we beat them by 14. Wow. You know what I mean? So, you know <laughs> – that's, that's major. I mean – That's major. No, no, but, you you know, I'm <laughs> not saying – you know, I had some pretty good games. You know, you have bad games here and there. But, I mean, it was a great experience, right? Mm. You know, like college – College, university in the States is a big time thing. Like you big have time. to practice. If you don't practice, you're not going to, you're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So that's when I'm working with the kids and stuff, the guys are not working. I say, yo, what are you going to do? Who are you going to play against? <laughs> right. And, and they don't so, understand. And they don't understand the how hard, like what hard work really is. Like you may think that you're going full speed. You might think you're really working hard. But yes. when you get but when you get to Division One, it is a oh. different animal. Everybody can jump, everybody can shoot, everybody can dribble. Yeah. But now, when do you shoot? When do you dribble? Yeah. When do you dunk? So stuff like that. I always like to do a drill when I'm when I'm when I'm teaching kids. I when, like when we play one on one. I always like to do like two to three dribbles at most because 
I do. I do one. You do one. Well, there you go. One is was one is amazing. <laughs> one is amazing. I think one is when you start getting to the elite. Like okay, now we're doing just one. But you know how it is in Division One. You don't have all that time to be dribbling, yes. dribbling to get a move off, right? You gotta. You yeah, gotta, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. You gotta. You gotta sweep and go. You know, up they can go with a dribble, pull up. So it's different, man. You know what I mean? Nine. Nine times out of ten, before I even get the ball, I already know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm already watching the guy guarding me. Yeah, and then I'm watching the guy behind him. I told some. I told uh, a student of mine. Um, we were they're playing a zone defense for the high school that I work at. Um, and I I told them I already know what I'm going to do when I get the ball before I get the ball. Just to how I see how you're playing defense, and he never yes. under, he never understood yeah. what I was talking yeah. about. And I, I yeah. kept beating him, I kept beating him, and then I explained to him, like, look how you're playing defense and da da da, da. So that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. So so yes. after so after so after college, um, you're playing pro now. So, yes. yeah, take take us through so that. You, ready? you get you ready for this one? I'm I got a whole bunch of stories. I'm I'm ready, man. I'm ready, man. <laughs> okay, so so my senior year, um San Antonio Spurs started coming to my games. Mm. So they're talking to my coaches and all that stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is looking good. I told my father and it's just, okay. So everything looked good. So I thought they, they, they were at my games and everything. So the draft went, I had uh, an agent that he was Nash's agent now, big agent. I forgot Steve, his name. Steve Nash? Yeah, his okay. agent. But right. he, he was already, he was, he was still in college. Okay. So, so, I go back home. I remember it like the other, the other day. Me and my boys, I didn't tell them that I had an agent and Spurs are watching me. I didn't tell my boys much. I just kind of keep keep it level, you know? Yeah. And uh, we're watching the draft. I'm like, man, I didn't get, you know, whatever. Okay. I talked to my boy. He says, don't play no ball down there. Just train. Because I got Sacramento and Golden State. They want to bring you into veterans camp. Mm. So this is when world championships is going on in Toronto. <laughs> so, is. so I don't play for Team Canada. They're, I don't even try out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you guys, I don't need Team Canada. I'm about to go play in the NBA. My chest is out. I'm chilling. <laughs> I watch Shaq and all these people play at the, the Sky Dome, everything, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm still gonna play in the NBA. I don't care about all you guys right now. I was there, you know, because because I had game. some bad experience with basketball Canada. So forget you guys. Yo, World Championships is done. A little bit later on, veterans camp comes around. The agent says, "Those we I can't get you into those camps, and I don't work with players overseas." Just like that, mm. I was like devastated. I was devastated. I was like, "This is crazy." So I went. Uh, I went around till January. Went with a traveling team. My guy Carl, Carl Fix in Regina, Saskatchewan. Great friend to this day. We traveled to North Dakota, South Dakota, different places, play for money, play, play in front of people. And uh, I did that with his team. And then Team Canada started up the next year. I was with him. I stayed out in Regina. Mm -hmm. And I, and by then, I wasted a year. They already did their thing. And then I went to Team Canada. The first day I went to Team Canada's tryout, the coach says, I heard about you. There's a new coach. I heard you don't play no defense. The minute you don't play no defense, you're out of here. And I was like, Okay. Just, just like that. Just like that. Because, you know, everybody in Toronto says I don't play no defense, but you, you, you can't find guys that beat me. Right, right, right. right. I don't play no defense because you, maybe you can't play. <laughs> right? So, anyways, I make the team, lead the team in scoring with Nash on the team. Mm. Then after that, I go to the Philippines, and the Raptors guys were the ones that sent me there, and then they start watching me. I came back. I worked out with them. I was having a really good time with them. I, I remember playing with Damon Stoudemire when he was there, and we're playing against all those guys. We're going to seven. I'm scoring six. Dunking on people. That is crazy. So, so they said to me they don't have a contract at the time. So then I went to Lebanon, and then I went and I started traveling, and that's how everything started. Mm. But I just kind of, I just kind of, you know, I didn't. Give, I don't think I gave everything I had. But that's kind of how everything started, and I got some money, and you know I wasted it, but I got some money. Mm. 
keep but I got to see the world. I got, I got, I got, I got to see the world. How, how many, how many years did you play pro? I how played in your, seven, eight, seven, eight years. At the least, yeah. I, I moved around, and you know, every country I, I went to, they wanted me back, kind of thing. And I was like, I'm an NBA player. I shouldn't even be here. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So I didn't really put everything I coulda. So a lot of places I played, I think I didn't train. I just went there, and I didn't have to push myself. You, you know, you, I'm playing you, point guard. Do you think basketball was, like, a natural thing for you? Like, you know? Well, my best friend, one of my best friends said that. He goes, you think everybody <laughs> can shoot like you? And I was like, yeah, if you practice. Yeah. And he goes, no. You know, so, yeah, I, a lot of things came to me. I played soccer and volleyball. Just a, I did everything. Yeah, just an athlete. Football, if you threw me a ball, I can catch it easy and stuff like that. So, yeah. the only play, uh, sport I couldn't play was baseball. And my friend Brian made fun of me like that. Because I got a... Uh, <laughs> I got athlete of the year in the school, and then we went to play uh, baseball in, in, in uh, gym class. And he goes, how can you be athlete of the year you can't play baseball? <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Uh, I want to I I go back to, um, to Team Canada. Because yes. when, did yes. you, when, did you, when did you start? Like, did, did you not start, like, in high school playing with the national team? Yeah, grade 12. Yeah, so I went out for Team Ontario. Mm-hmm. I went out for Team Ontario. So... I'm thinking to myself, they're not picking me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, there's a thing going on with race and stuff like that. So, a lot of these teams, you ain't seen much black dudes, man. I'm not a racist, but I'm just saying what it is. Yeah. So, I'm seeing a whole bunch of tall, white dudes. I'm saying, holy smokes, and 6'10", whatever. So, we had a camp at York. And I'm thinking to myself, they ain't picking me, man. So, I just kept trying, trying, trying. And then there was a – I went to score a basket. And then a 6'10 guy went to throw the ball – like, I scored the basket, he goes to throw the ball inbounds, and I act like I'm running that way, and I ran, and I came back, mm-hmm. and he threw it to me. Yeah. And I went, and he, I punched it on him, and he flew out of bounds. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? Then when they, when they called the, when they called the, you know, the 15 guys they're going to take to try out for the team, I was the 15th name on that list. Mm. So then, then we went for Team Ontario, we went to play against all the other provinces. And I was the MVP of everything, all the provinces out there. And then they brought me at the end of the summer with the national team for Canada, with the B team. And then next year I went to the main team. Mm. And, I was still in, and I was still in high school. So who, everything started from high school. Who, who, was on, who was some of the names that was on the B team with you? Do you remember? Rocky Llewellyn. Yeah, no. His Darren son, Thomas. His son, his son goes to like his son plays the division. That's, that's Bobby. Okay, Bobby. That's Bobby. Okay, yeah. I'm very I'm very cool with these guys, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Rocky Rocky was ugh, that was my hero at one time. Yeah. Six eight, six seven, wing, left handed, mm-hmm. can dunk, mm-hmm. shoot, everything. He was like, you know, oh my goodness. Yeah, you know what I mean? He's, a, he's another one that I heard about, man. That so was a real deal. I met him and uh I quickly earned his respect, and we ended up being cool together. And he was one of the main guys that got, like, Boston College chasing after me because I think the coach at Boston College used to coach St. Bonaventure. Mm-hmm. So he's basically saying, yo, this is a kid. You better get him. Right. Yeah, so these Rocky was crazy. I love – I love yo, he was crazy. Like, that's, a, that's another one that should be in the NBA I, that, you know, you just kind of scratch your head. But I think sometimes you get frustrated – with different situations that happen, you I can't speak for him, mm-hmm. but he was ridiculous. That's a, he was an NBA player. Yeah, I I heard he had his way with Sean Elliott. For real, eh? and Sean Elliott had Sean, a long career in NBA. Sean, Sean Elliott, um, who went he went to San Arizona. Antonio Spurs, 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 Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yep, Rocky was ridiculous. So, yeah. but everybody, you know, you know, I think all of us and the guys like Rocky and all the guys before and um, just a whole bunch of guys. I think they paved the paved the way for all these young guys to have like an easier way now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because before it was it was a rough time. You know, you used to see Team Canada with one or two black guys, and yeah. they were on the bench. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you used you know who went to D D one in Canada because there's only two three guys coming out of Canada. That's crazy. That is crazy. Now now there's two three guys coming out of a, a high school in Brampton. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm happy for everything that's happened. I don't have no kind of, you know, but there's a, there was a whole bunch of good ballplayers that came out of here, coming out of Malton, 
came out of Rexdale, came out of Scarborough, downtown, everywhere. So, so I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you another question. Um, Malton, it's um, it's yes. not it's not big, you know. Yes. Um, I I moved here in the mid '90s. Um, when I got here, Jerome Robinson was the man, and uh, I just I just played in the Offset Championship game when I was at Running Mead. I was I was I was 13, turned 14, and um, yes. I was playing for Running Mead. And uh, we played. We beat Morningstar to go to the finals. Yes. So yeah, uh, Mike George was going for a layup, and I and I and I ran him down, and I and I hit him. I followed him, but I was talking smack to him. So this is where we became a little bit of rival with the whole yes. Morningstar thing. And I had no clue who he was at the time, and we beat him. This is this young guy, and, I, and then I and then I move. My family moves from Western to Black Creek, and we moved to Malton. And okay. Jerome is the guy. So right away, yeah. I'm attacking Jerome, and I'm like, "Yo, are you? You're the guy." And I'm over here swinging my my silver medal, like nice. <laughs> like nice. an NBA championship ring. I'm a kid. I'm nice. only 14, and I'm talking trash. And and Jerome hated me. Kingsley hated me. But he was the he, Jerome was the guy. And I and I and the reason why I like Jerome because he was he was ultra aggressive. And yes. there was no taking it easy on me. We played one on one. Obviously, back in the day, that's how you would determine who was the better player, who would win one on one, yes. right? So we'd play one on one a million times, and he'd he'd beat me over and over again. And we just became cool as hell. And you know, that's my guy today. Like to this day, we're still close. But um, Malton, I seen guys from you know who were before me, Jerome, guys who were before yes. him. You know, you Sherman Hamilton. Yes. Do you yes. think Malton is 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 a place that produces some of the best players? Period, in this country. Yeah, well, well, we had uh, the Low Brothers. We had uh, Peter Nelson went to West. Who we had Emilio Barneswell. We had a whole bunch of guys um, that went to each school, mm-hmm. and I think we we were we were really good, you know. And um, you're talking about Jerome. Well, when I was coming up, I had. Reggie, a bleedy behind me, and I had Sherman behind me. Those are two guys that really stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. And then um, Jerome's older brother, Greg Walker, Greg Walker came yes. before Jerome, which he was very good. He was very good. And yeah. so I never got a chance to see Jerome play in high school. But for me, because I was the guy, my, my place was at Sheridan College, and all the young guys used to come, and they'd take their turns trying to work me over. <laughs> they have to work them over. They have to work them over and then sit down with them and explain to them, like, you talk to Jerome and he tell you. And I'd, I'd say, okay, this is what you have to do. You're good, but this is what you have to do. And I remember me and Jerome were close too, right? So super close. So the other day, I told him he was working at Eastern Michigan, so he doesn't work anymore, so I can, tell, I can ride him out. I, t- I always get sweatsuits. So I say, Jerome, bring me a sweatsuit. On a Sunday, we're here chilling. My doorbell rings. There's a Cadillac out there. You, I open the door. Sweatsu is there. He's still working at Eastern Michigan. And I said, he goes, you know what? I never worked on that pull-up you told me. Eh? And I was like, you know, because his, he was, no, because I always like, I always liked these guys because all these guys looked at me and they wanted to bust my ass. Yeah. And I'm looking at them like, you know what? Keep going. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I don't want anybody laying down for me. I want you to bust my ass too, but you're not going to bust my ass. You're not going to give it and to so we have a. So we have a great workout, you know what yeah. I mean? And then we're done because sometimes I'm playing against a guy and you can, well, I'm going to get beat anyways. I'm like, yo, you're not helping me. I, I need to play against somebody yeah. that's trying to defend me, right? So, and Jerome, like, Relentless. I love Sherman, you know what I'm saying? Relentless. Sherman had a monster and uh, Reggie had a monster and Jerome had a monster where you can see them and they're not giving you nothing. Mm-hmm. You have to earn it. They're looking at you like, okay, you hit that on me, but you won't hit it again. But I'm thinking, well, I'm going to do this all night. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I love those guys. You know what I mean? And the year Sherman and I played on the national team, we did it two years. I was so proud because what's the chances of that small place producing two guys that's getting significant time on a Canadian national team representing a country? You know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah, that, From that Jamaica. Crazy. That is, that is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. 
And, and this, yeah, is why, so, and, this is why and, and, I always vouch for Malton. This is why I always vouch for Malton being one of the best places, you know, in the city. I think it's very underrated um, as far as the talent level that comes out of here, man. And I speak so highly of it, man, because I'm proud and I see a whole bunch of guys who were before me, you know, that paved the way for me. You know what I mean? Like you said, when, when I first got to Malton and I matched up against Jerome, he didn't give me anything. Yes, but, but he but he knew that I was a real one because I kept coming back every day, and, and that's and, the story he told me. Yeah, and he'll tell you like this guy was annoying. He just wanted to beat me so bad, and that was just my mind state, right? So when he went off to college, me and Jerome were every day. Like every day we'd be together. It was me, Kim, and Kingsley every day. Nice, nice. And um, nice. we'd just be playing ball, whatever we needed to do. And I was like, I'm gonna beat you. And when he finally came back from college, you know, here I am. I'm bigger. You know what I mean? I'm stronger. My game is developed. I worked on it. And I was finally able to beat him. And when I finally beat him one-on-one, it was yeah. like, okay, nobody could beat me now. It's over. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to terrorize the city. And, and it, it just gave me that confidence, man. So I always look at Malton as one of the best play, places that produce players, man. No, it was it, – it's, it's tough because Toronto – and Scarborough, they're in the major tournaments. I think I think they were into everything way before we were, mm-hmm. and they made they made me love basketball. Like I used to go and watch Darren Thomas, Mark Henry, nice. Rocky Llewellyn, mm-hmm. Ivan Matthews, and the name the twins. Uh, everybody, I, we used to get in my buddy's car and drive all over Toronto and watch <laughs> everybody because that was the tournaments, right? Yeah, and it was amazing. And then. It was funny because sometimes when I end up playing against some of these guys that I idolize, I can't, you know, it'd be like, I'm killing this dude, but I can't look like I'm, you know, I haven't been here before because this was a guy that we drove like an hour to go watch, and now I'm having my way with him. But he created, a lot of these guys created the monster in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, just like watching Phil play, he created the monster in me, just mm-hmm. like watching the Twins play and watching all the other guys play. It, I was I used to come back to Malton and go beside, behind Westwood and just start playing. Yeah, yeah. And start and start dreaming. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and then next thing you know, you're you're matched up against the guy. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You're matched up against the guy. And I I tell the kids I said you can go as far as you want to go and stop using excuses. Mm-hmm. No, like you know, it really it's true because I remember playing at Arizona against. Damon Stoudemire, Chris Mills, all those guys. And then you see that one referee that you see on CBS all the time. And I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> and those guys, you know what I mean? both, like, those guys are both pros, man. Mills but I'm saying, Stoudemire. like, all these young guys, all you got to do is put your head down and dream and work. Mm. You know what I mean? Put your head down. And anytime people are telling you all these things, you're the best, you're the best, you're... forget that. Keep working. You know what I mean? Because then you get caught up in all the other stuff. Yeah. So, so and I think, um, go ahead. No, no, no. Finish. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you another question, but finish. Go ahead. No, no, no. I get caught up in other stuff because after I got to a certain level, which I was, I wasn't around people much and stuff like that. Then the partying and all the different things and the girls and whatever. So you got to keep your head down if you really want to go to where you want to go. You keep your head down. Yeah. You stay humble. You stay in the books. You keep your head down. You stay away from any kind of negativity, and you, you just because all when you're playing ball, you got g- guys that want to hang with you, girls, mm. you know, and you can be in the wrong situation. <laughs> Many times I could have been in the wrong situation at the wrong time. Right. You know what I mean? So you yeah. got to know what you want. I don't think I'm better than anybody else, but at the same time, you got to know what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, so I have all these young guys that I'm blessed to work with, and young females as well. And I just try to be as honest as I can with them. Mm-hmm. I and think, I, I say, think that's the best way to be with them, though, is just to be honest, man. I think a lot of them think it's sweet and they think it's just going to be so easy. It's not no. like that. If you don't put that work in, I tell them all the time, like, you got to want to work every day. You know, I was, a yes. gym, I was a gym rat. Like, I was studying and seeing who was what, who was the best player. And that just yes. made me want to work. And I was, just, yes. I was just always in the gym. You know what I mean? But that, that leads me to this question is, you know, with your academy, is it like, how did that start? Like, is that something that you knew that you wanted to do from the beginning? Or, like, how did that happen? All right, happen? so 
years before I, I, I even stopped playing basketball, I said, if I made the NBA, I would go back to Malton and build a gym and make everybody work out for free. Mm -hmm. I did my overseas thing. And by the time I came back from overseas, I got burnt out. I don't want to be around people. Forget this Bobby Allen thing. I'm sick and tired of everything. I just went off and then just quit everything. Right. Right. My buddies start bothering me like, yo, man, you have too much information. My buddy Steve's like, you have too much information, Slavic. My brother, you have too much information. You can't just walk away. But I'm like, I don't really like being around people anymore. Man. I just want to just go, go away. You know what I mean? Mm. So they just kept bothering me, kept bothering me. And I said, I'll do it. And then so I went to um, this guy at a Montessori school, Rick. And I said, um, Rick, you know what? I'm planning to do this. And he goes, oh, yes. And he's a Filipino guy. I had a really good time in the Philippines. I played two years there. And so he gave me the big opportunity to use his gym. And then I started hearing a whole bunch of people say, what does Bobby Allen know about teaching kids how to play basketball? And then that's when the fire started because you're competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, and then I hear who said it, and I'm thinking, man, after games, guys, like you would come hug me and tell me you love me. <laughs> and now, now you're telling me I can't teach kids how to play basketball? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, you know? No so, 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 it, so it became competitive for me to say, you know what, I can do this. And I was nervous because I wasn't a people – I'm still not a people person, but I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to get the kids to the best they can. So I got my first three, four customers, and three of them sucked. And I said, um, excuse me, um, your son doesn't like basketball. And they're like, I can't believe you just said that. And I go, well, I don't want to wait. I don't want to waste your money. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not rich, but your son sucks and he does, and his body language, he doesn't want to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather have one kid in the gym working than the one kid working and three kids not working and I'm freaking out because I'm trying to get a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. So the parents started falling in love with that and they start telling other people and they're saying, yo, this guy is, he's keeping it 100 with us. Mm -hmm. And then he just started, and I'm teaching them how to play game scenarios and stuff like that. And I'm talking to him, you know, we talk about different things when a kid will come about, you know, different things going on in his, his or her, her life. I can sit with them and we can talk about that stuff. So yeah. it became bigger than basketball, but I was never trying to hustle anybody. That mm -hmm. was, that's not my thing. Right, right. So, I, and then I fell in love with it. Mm. And how, how long has the academy been going on for now, man? Ten years. Uh, ten years. That's amazing. Ten years. And you sent, you mm -hmm. sent players Division One, pro yes. stuff, everything. My, my biggest... My biggest claim, you know, because RJ and Rowan, I played against Rowan. Rowan was playing with me. So Rowan naturally came to me because I was, you know, playing with Rowan and I had my time with him, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's like, yo, Bobby used to, Bobby said that, yo, I played, I mean, Rowan said that I played with Allen Iverson because he went to St. John's. Yeah. He said that I played with Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, all those guys in the Big East. But he said, the closest thing to you is maybe Iverson, but you're bigger. Rowan is 6'6", six, six, and he couldn't guard me. That's crazy. <laughs> so he, he brought his son to me. So when I see mm -hmm. RJ in the NBA, I'm like, I'm not really that guy that helped him because Rowan was going to get him there anyways. Mm -hmm. but, but Kyle Alexander, who went to Tennessee and has a two-way with Tennessee uh, with uh, Miami Heat, that's my claim to fame. Mm. He came. He came to the gym, and his dad and everybody was trying to decide if he plays basketball or not. Right. And his dad at one time was like, "I'm just gonna take take him out. I'm just gonna take him out." And I'm like, "Keep him in. I'm not paying my money." I said, "Don't pay your money. Keep him in." Mm -hmm. And then I called. We called up Larry Blunt. He was at Athletes Institute, and then he came. He goes, "I got no time to come down there." I said, "Just come." He came. He looked in there, and he says, "I want him." And he's raw, but he right now, um, he's in the NBA NBA radar. His dad called me the other day. Phoenix wanted to sign him, mm -hmm. but he hurt his knee that day in a D League game, so he didn't get signed that day in Phoenix for a two year contract. Damn. So Kyle Alexander is, you know what I mean? And then you see all these other kids coming up and I'm in love with watching kids develop. Mm -hmm. And you know, as long as you push. Like I, I tell the, I tell my kid Kevin, Kevin Toth, he helps me too. I say, Kevin, are we friends? 
He goes, no, unless we're playing good. This business. Right. You know what I mean? Unless you're working hard, unless you're playing good. I'm telling a kid that's 10. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? This is not no friendship. Do you pay your friends to teach you how to play basketball? <laughs> you know what I mean? So this, this is business, and I want you to work. And then when you start playing good, then I start bringing you out, and I start calling coaches for you, and I start doing everything for you. But this is not a hangout. Right. I, I don't hang with my I, I don't hang with 10-year-olds. I don't yeah. hang with 14-year-olds. I don't hang with 16-year-olds. I'm trying to get you better in basketball. Let's work. And then – and then, by the way, and then I give you all my information you need. I'm not holding anything back. Mm. So that's who I am. Yeah. So someone, someone had a question on my partner there. Um, he wants to know what's the ages up for the academy. I know he has a young uh, son. So we we start we start eight eight to seventeen. Eight okay. to seventeen. It's like uh, I'm just trying to get to a point where you can take the information. Because sometimes the kids can't take the information and they get frustrated. So I'm like, well, eight is a good age where you can take the information and you're good. So mm-hmm. start there. And so I've been excited about it, man. It's like uh, there's been days I go to the gym and I could have all these different things happening in my life. But once I get in the gym, five minutes into it, I forgot about, you forgot about anything else that's happening. And it's yeah. just like when you used to play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, you have all these problems and stuff. My parents... We're not together, and you having all these different things. But once I step on that basketball court, man, I was good. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, same, same so with me, man. Ba- basketball has saved a lot of people's lives. Facts. I it it so. saved my life, and then so when I see all these people doing the thing, I always text Jerome and Sherman and all these guys. Doesn't matter if they're playing basketball or not, just in life. Mm-hmm. And I say, I'm proud of you guys. Yeah. Because everybody came out of different situations and they're doing really big things. And even if it's not a big thing that everybody can see, they have their families, their families are good. Mm-hmm. And I just love that. You know what I mean? So, you know, we don't, you don't see how we all started. Yeah. Right. You know, so I'm, I'm super proud of everybody. Um, every time I hear Malton, I just, it, it, it gives me chills, you know? Yeah, me too, man. I got, I, we got Dwayne Jones in there. He's from, he's another Malton guy. Says he's his idol, one of his idols. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Dwayne, Dwayne Jones was a very, very good player, man. One of my big brothers, too, man. What Did I he go to uh, Texas, A&M? Texas A&M? No, that was Mar- Marlon Pompey went to Texas A&M. He went to LaSalle, actually. Yeah. Oh, the, the Dwayne Jones went to LaSalle? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think I met him once. I met him once at Humber College. Yeah, he probably did. Very, very good player. Yeah, very I did. Very smart, man. Doing very well. Yeah. He, he has a young son right now, too, that's going to be a stud. So, you know, definitely about I, that. You know what's crazy? Um... How like until kids are like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I don't really put too much stock into it mm-hmm. because because I've seen so much kids that are young and then they just fizzle out at the end yeah. when they get to fourteen because everybody else grew. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So when they're around fourteen, fifteen, I'm like, okay, you know, this kid's gonna be a serious problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? But and then the, but when you see the ten year olds and eight year olds and they're it's just maybe they learn basketball faster than everybody else. Yeah. You know I what I mean? I so I, mean, I, I, really... I didn't start that early. I, I, like my sister, she, we started probably getting the fundamental stuff down when I was probably like 12, 13, man. And I would just, and, and my whole thing, I was just doing a lot of um, form shooting at night. Yes. I'd lay yes. in my bed every night and I'd just do, yes. you know, 100 left, 100 right. And that's what yes. brought a lot of my touch. So I grew when I was in seventh and eighth grade. I was 6'5, man. So that's I, crazy. I had I had crazy touch for a guy that was that that's big. That's crazy. So I was I was able to have like I had like my touch was incredible, you know what I mean. So I was able to you, uh, for the shoot. Did you know that girls do everything better than guys? I, we I just be- don't. I, I I believe so. I I just we I, just I, don't. I, I think the thing that separates the women and the and the and the, and the guys is just athleticism. You yeah, know? we just don't. <laughs> but uh, the girls do everything properly. But the guys, they we have a lot of bad habits. Mm. You know what I mean? We have a lot, way more bad habits than the females. So I res- and I respect the women's game, man. No, I do. I love know. watching the women's game. I in the in the Sun Belt, we had Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky, and some of them. You know, those girls' programs are crazy. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, I'm seeing I'm seeing six three, six four point guards, women. Yeah. Imagine that, right? Women. <laughs> so, so I come back. I come back to. I'm. I know this is gonna be hilarious, but I come back to like play pickup at uh, Sheridan, and I'm thinking to myself, this guy is trying to argue with me, and I know females that's 
in the States <laughs> that could murder this guy right yeah. here. You know what I mean? Like, these guys are crazy. And I'm thinking, yeah. yo, you know, and, and they come in to play their game. They're dressed nicely and everything. But once they dress up to play, it's over. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and it's, uh, yo, it's a different animal. But to, to go back to that now, though, um, now that we have the prep schools here, mm-hmm. um, we're doing a really good job and the level of basketball has went up significantly. Yeah, I agree. So if, if you were a 6'4", good size, you just dominate everything. But now if you go to one of these prep schools, there's a 7-footer there. Mm-hmm. There's a 6'10 kid there, 16 years old. 6'7 wing, 15 years old. Yeah. So the level of ball, and you got all the guys like the Roe Russells and the, the Dawkins and all the other guys. Uh, the, a lot of guys, it's a lot of things happening, and they've been pushing the, t- the, the talent, and I love it. Mm-hmm. I you know what I mean? I love that what's been happening with the talent. You know, I love it. Like, I'm proud to be from Canada. I'm proud to be from Malton. I'm proud to be Jamaican. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I'm, so, I'm, right, I'm right there with you, brother. I'm right there with you, man. I got, I got, um, I got one more question for you, man. Um, you know, uh, there, there's a bunch of racism, you know, obviously going on right now. Um, yes, it's wild. Like, um, my my co-host, you know, um, <clears throat> he said he used to work at uh Sheridan, you know, and he used to let you in the gym or whatnot. And um, yes, he told me that you mentioned to him about a story of um where you faced racism in the states, where um, you know, um. It was a it was a restaurant, I guess, and they didn't let you in because of the skin, your color of your skin, and then you went out and scored thirty, and then the same owner of the restaurant was like, "Hey, come and eat," you know, but he didn't realize it was he was talking to you, you know what I mean? Before you, that, you don't understand how much things happen to me when I come back here. I wouldn't tell anybody because I don't want to be that guy because Canada is it's here, but they hide it here. Mm-hmm. Um, but so when I come back, I don't want to be running around talking about all oh, this racism in the States and stuff. So I just kind of like humbly come back and whatever. So, but like your friend would say, I would sit down with anybody and have a conversation. It's easy, right? Yeah. But I've been through situations and I'll, I'll even give you a better story. So when I first got to junior college, my dad drops me off. I go for a walk and I'm saying, I'm about to own this town. <laughs> the first time I took a couple of steps out my house, all I heard was get the hell out of town. N word. Mm. I'm like, yo, where are we? 1925? You know what I mean? So, so I'm like, I was, I was distraught, right? So then me and my buddy now, we're walking to practice one day, and a guy's driving by in a truck. One of them pickup trucks, same thing, yells, get out of town. N-word. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. That's crazy. I said, hey, man, stop, stop your truck. I'm sick and tired of this. Come deal with us like a man. You know, if you're going to say something, back it up. Because, you know, you know, everybody got that temper, right? Mm-hmm. This guy gets out of his truck and starts shooting. Wow. That's better than a restaurant story. We, we ran to practice and we told him Sheriff got involved. And so now, you know, to go around, you know, I love BJ and them, but it was an experience. And to go around, I was junior college player of the year in America and they had a banquet for me in the town. <laughs> and most likely the guy who shot at me was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That so is yeah, crazy. life is life is crazy. So wow. I know that stuff is around and I try to humbly deal with it. I don't walk around with I hate this person or that person. I go off how people treat me. Mm-hmm. Any color. Yeah. But I know the stuff is there. Yeah. You know, my dad told me a long time ago, man, you know, you got to be twice as good as everybody else to get what you want because, you know, it, it's out there. Mm-hmm. So I just try to live like that. And I even tell, I'll tell the white kids in my gym or the Indian kids in my gym, when a coach comes to recruit, he's not looking for no Indian kid or no little white dude. So there's a little reverse on that side. I just try to be honest with everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As a coach, you got to make, as a, as a, as a player, you got to make a coach want you. And in society... I just have my kids and I try to defend them. And then the kids in my program, anybody comes up with me, I will tell you how society is in my point of view. Mm-hmm. And then it's your, it's, I give it to you and then it's up to you to take what I'm giving to you. Racism is there, but some of my best friends are white. Some of my best friends, I have Filipino friends. I have everything. So I can't, I, how am I going to be racist? Same, yeah. You know what I mean? My be- one of my best friend's wife is Indian and I love her. Mm-hmm. 
You know, my kids call her auntie. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we don't have that. As, but it's there. It's here. It's there, yeah. yeah. You just, you just got to say, well, okay, you know what? You're, you know, in your head, you go, okay, you're racist. And you, you, you keep it moving. Mm -hmm. You can work with them. You can work with the racist because, you know, they're, they, they're racist. I had a guy in junior college. My first year, I'm giving him the business. He called me the N-word again. I'm like, by the end of the year, anybody try to touch me on the other team, he was wanted to fight them, and I ended up going to his house, and I had to sleep over at his house. That's because he, I, I knew that he'd never been around black people before, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I'm just me. So if I would have beat him up and all this thing when he said it, I just went into what he expected me, what he sees on TV. I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to give you that pass, but you can't say that again, and I keep kicking your ass. In practice, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be you know, gonna be a human being, and then soon he fell in love with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be his friend, and I didn't, I didn't like what he said, but I knew in my mind he's never been around a black person before. Especially when you go to those, those junior colleges. Now. Small towns, they're, yes. They're in small towns, right? So, <clears throat> yes. like you said, a lot of them never been. The, the high school is in that town. The college is in that town. And then they just maybe work on a farm and they, they just stay in that town and they never leave. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Where they, where they, the only time they ever see any black people is when they come to the, 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 the players get recruited and they come to this junior college, right? That's like their NBA team, that junior college, right? And, or, maybe yeah, they, so, or maybe they might have a division one that's, you know, somewhere close by that they can drive maybe an hour away. <laughs> I think, I think the whole deal with all this stuff is, is there's a lot of hatred sometimes. Because I played a year in Lebanon, and there's no black people, but they're killing each other over there. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of hatred out here, and I think people got to just, you know, stop it, you know? Because when all this hatred is done, all the cop killing is done and stuff, you go back to Malton, you got black black people hating each other, white people hating each other. There's a lot of hatred right now. You know, it's not even race sometimes, you know? And so I just try to make sure that if someone comes in contact with me, they're not meeting a very negative person. Mm-hmm. I'm not walking around saying, oh, because of my color or because of this. I just walk and how are you doing today? And, you know, keep it moving. Positive. Positive vibes yes. all the time. Yeah. Yes. I agree, brother. I got I got one more, man. I lied, man. I got one more question for you, man. Okay. <laughs> I okay. got, um, how do you feel about the NBA and, and, and what they're trying to do as far as come back with the corona stuff going on and then the whole everybody staying at Disneyland and, and whatnot? Or was it Disney World? I think – I think, I think family wise, health wise, I think they need to figure out what's going on with the virus itself instead of letting everybody get back out there and, you know, getting sick. Because right now, all this stuff is happening, but I'm not hearing they have a cure for this. Mm -hmm. They're saying all this stuff, isolation, groups of 10, this and that. And it's like, but is there a cure? <laughs> No, you know what I'm saying? They, but they just keep saying, okay, you want to watch basketball or play basketball more than your life? Mm. You know, there's going to be people, there's people that's going to take the, some losses, right? So, you know, some people might lose a year out of their careers. But you could die. You could die. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like you can't die. People have died. So yeah. I'm saying health first. Especially, health first. Especially but, you know, when they seen like, People will say, oh, you know, rich people ain't getting that. But then, you know, Carl Anthony Towns' mom, he, she passed away. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, she, yes. she so, died so, from the corona. Like, it's a real thing. So people. so, so, so what, what, what people want is they get to watch basketball on TV, and then two twos, oh, such and such got it. Such and such got it. And then it's like, no, you don't want that, man. You want, we find out what's going on with the vaccine. We find what's happening. And then. Everything's, you know, sometimes somehow gets back to normal. But I think we haven't found anything yet. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happened yet. And they're saying numbers are going down because we're staying in our house. Exactly. Not much people are going out. But I really, you know, I, I respect the game so much. And they're cheapening it by doing what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Just to give people something to see. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think they should do that. I think I think they should just wait it out, come back when everything is properly and handled it properly because right now they make and i heard they even said that they, if the, some guys don't play they'll put replacement players exactly i heard that too so, so now you're watching golden state steph curry's there is some 
Steph Curry's brother is there. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just joking, but I'm just saying, you know, like yeah. you're cheapening. The, you don't want to cheapen your product. I agree. I, I, I that's I the agree, whole deal. Man. I agree. I love I love the NBA, man. But um, it, it, it like to me, this season is gonna be asterisk, regardless. You know, it, exactly. It's gonna be asterisk because there's no home court advantage. Like, what about all those teams that we worked so hard to get home, home court advantage? There's no home yes. court advantage. There's no nothing. There's nothing. So, yeah. It's just like okay, let's all jump in a bubble and play ball. I I I think that if I was some of the top tier players, I wouldn't want to play, and I would just say let's let's just wait it out till next year, man. You know, you got a you have a situation where you could bring something back to your kids, as far as the virus and to your grandparents and to your aunts and to your uncles, and most of us, like they said, you know, most of us we have all these different ailments. Blood issues, heart issues, because of all the pork and all these things that we eat, mm-hmm. right? And you're bringing that back to your family. Now, you're not sick because you're in great shape and you can fight it off, but not your uncle. Can't fight it off. He's had, he's had two surgeries. Not your grandfather, not your grandmother, maybe not your, your daughter who has serious asthma. You know what I mean? Just, there's a whole bunch of different situations to this. So I really think people should concentrate on health first. Mm-hmm. I'm selfish because I love my family, I love my friends, and I'm I'm blessed right now that it hasn't really hit me yet. But I'd I'd hate to hear that one of my friends got it and he died or she. Oh my God, my family! I'd go crazy. Exactly, exactly. So I say we just everybody just chalk it up and start fresh when everything starts. When they find the vaccine and do all those things because it's a product, and you're cheap. You're cheapening your product. Mm Hmm. You know, I'm watching your product. Your product is good. Exactly. Suppose you start just doing whatever, you're cheapening your product. Mm -hmm. Don't cheapen your product. You know, at the end of the day, now people know that you're just looking at for the money. We need the money. We need the money. Like, I've stared at a kid sometimes and saying, yeah, but he's paying me so much money. I'm like, no, I can't do it. Hey, he can't sign back up with me. He don't like basketball. Cause I'm cheaping up what I do yeah. by letting that kid that can't play stay in my program. He can't play. He doesn't want to play. Yeah. But his not parents want to pay only, me. Yeah. Not only can't he play, he doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to play. There's a difference so now I'm cheaping the play. product. Yeah. There's a difference if he. So if now you he, see. Now you see ten kids. Nine kids are running up in the gym hard, and there's one kid who's just there. Mm-hmm. So I'm cheaping our product. So I do eight. Uh, I do four on four, and I sub one in. Yeah. That kid can't play because I'm cheapening my product. Don't cheapen. So the NBA right now, if they do that, they're cheapening up the product. Yeah. So that's what it is for, for me. In my for me. Yeah, I I, I believe this is gonna be an asterisk season myself, man. I, I that's what I feel. Yeah. So I don't know. We we I don't know if we got any questions, man, for Mister Mister Allen, man. If we got <laughs> any questions, I know I know, I know my partner, man. He he he. he he had some questions, but yo, brother, man, I I really appreciate you, man, taking the time, man, taking your time. I know you normally don't do this, so this yes. is a pleasure for me, man. Like I learned a lot today about you, you know, that I've only I've only, I never met you personally, but I've seen you play when I was young, of course. Yeah. But um, and I couldn't remember a whole lot, but I really appreciate you taking the time out, you know, of your time, your busy time, to sit down with me, and hip hop hoops and just talk basketball, man. Um, this is incredible. You know, um, I love what you're doing, you know, with your academy. Everybody, you know, you got Thank kids. You. you know, I got a young daughter, man. I got to bring her by when she gets older. You know, I don't want to train her because I know I'm too rough and I'm going to go crazy. So yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather yeah. put her somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, a lot of parents do that. A lot of parents yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I you know, know, she, and I know, you know she'll be in good hands as well. So that's something that would be great, you know. You know, you know, you know, Jerome was the one to say, Bobby, you got to do this. He's a stand-up dude. He was a he was an animal. He played hard and stuff. And so from Jerome said it, I was like, cool. I think uh, I think. And then every time you hit me, you're like, I'm super excited. I'm like, I love passion. I love people <laughs> who love. I love people who love what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love it. You know, you you because you gravitate to that because the person I used to tell I always used to tell people I love singers because you can see they love singing their, their emotions into their song and stuff. I love passion. Mm. Someone playing, someone playing hard and working hard, whatever. I love passion. So when you were hitting me saying I can't wait, I was like, I like if you take 
if you take what you do the way you've been doing it and don't think about the money with your head down, you'll be surprised where you get when you, you put your head up. Yeah. I promise you. 